When you're trying to be productive, you are probably doing something that makes you less productive. And the harder you try to be productive, the more you're setting yourself up for failure and the more you will make your future self want to procrastinate. My approach to work and my thinking about productivity has changed a lot in the last year or so, and especially since I took a real break from work for the first time in years. It really helped me recognize some fundamental, like buried deep underneath layers of behaviors, some fundamental mistakes that I was making. And I want to share one thing with you that kind of blew my mind when I noticed it. So how do I explain this? A good starting point might be this tweet right here. If you manage to control yourself, there will be ice cream, said the parent. I sure hope this doesn't have unforeseen lifelong consequences, thought the child, doing their best to physically tense the body in the higher ice cream probability shape. To me, this tweet made instant sense. There is something that happens, there's something that this describes where we are doing an internal motion, we're tensing up in a way to try and make something happen that is outside of our control. Kind of like you tense your muscles to pick up a heavy stone, but then for something much more abstract, such as how can I make sure I get ice cream in the future? Or how can I make sure I do a good job? How can I make sure I do this right? It's not as straightforward, yet we still have this tendency of creating tension, of almost constricting inside in some way to try and make that outcome happen. And of course, the problem is this doesn't work. In fact, in many cases, it's actually counterproductive. Think about trying to fall asleep. Really anything you do when you're in I'm trying to fall asleep mode probably doesn't just not help you fall asleep, but actually keeps you awake. So if you're thinking, oh, I need to get enough sleep, I should really fall asleep now, and you're starting to worry about how many hours do I have left, you're starting to do the math in your head, and you're thinking, I really need to sleep. Thoughts like this are only going to keep you awake, if anything. And any effort you add, any effort you make to try and fall asleep is just going to make you more tense, less relaxed, and basically more awake. So clearly, in order to fall asleep faster, what you need to do is like let go of that worry, let go of the tension, let go of the trying. And what I've discovered is that something very similar happens with work and our attempts to be productive. Except that when it comes to work, we're less likely to notice because we expect work to take effort. We expect it to be difficult and stressful. So we don't think, hey, if this is difficult and stressful, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But here's the thing, what you will find if you pay really close attention to what's happening when you're working is that there are at least two separate things going on. One of those things might be the effort involved in doing the work. And I'm gonna put that in brackets because we'll get back to that in a bit. A completely separate thing is the internal effort, the tension, the constriction inside you that is trying to succeed, trying to make this work. Kind of like trying to fall asleep just adds unnecessary tension. We do the same with work. You are trying to do a good job. One of the ways to notice this is that you have stories in your mind that include a lot of should and perhaps self-judgment and feeling like you were not doing enough. If you have, and this might be really in the background of your mind, but if you have something inside you going on like, I really should be more productive, or I should be further ahead in this project than I am, or I should be able to do this better than I'm doing it right now, all of that causes tension and stress and difficulty that is completely separate from any kind of difficulty and effort that the work itself takes. And here, this whole thing turns into a bit of a snake eating its own tail because the discomfort of that self-induced stress and tension is a big part or maybe the entirety of what you are trying to avoid. When you feel yourself wanting to procrastinate, when you feel yourself reaching for your phone all the time or multitasking or answering emails or, or sorting your inbox instead of you know, doing the important work, What's happening there is you're, you're trying to avoid something, right? You're, you're escaping something. The story in your mind is probably, I'm escaping the difficult work. I'm resisting the difficulty of the task at hand. But what if that's not true? What if the thing you're actually resisting is the tension and discomfort you're causing yourself? So it is this entire separate like bubble of discomfort that is caused by you and not the work itself that you're actually trying to avoid. Now, I said before that I put the effort and discomfort of doing the work in brackets. 
And the reason is that in my experience, very often, the work itself is actually not effortful or difficult or unpleasant. Or actually, maybe it is difficult, maybe it is challenging, as in, you know, you're solving problems. But solving problems can be really satisfying and entertaining and engaging. And difficult work is the kind of work that puts us in a flow state, if it's the right kind of work. So doing the difficult work itself is actually, maybe, not even unpleasant at all. Maybe it's actually quite rewarding. Remember that the research into flow states shows that flow states are the states in which we are at our most productive, but also people who are in flow more often tend to be much more satisfied and basically happier than people who are not in flow. So it seems like doing challenging work, if it's the right kind of work, is actually a, a crucial component to living a really good life. So why would we avoid that? So let's look at what this tells us about procrastination. I think that there are going to be two causes of procrastination that apply maybe always or almost always. The first is what we just talked about. You're actually resisting this kind of self-inflicted suffering that comes from trying hard and tension and judgment and so on when you're doing the work. So that feels bad. You want to avoid that and you have a misattribution. You think it's the work that's causing that. And so you avoid the work. The second reason you might procrastinate is essentially reasonable procrastination. You're, you're basically right to want to avoid the work. And this might be the case if you have to do some bullshit work. So if you are in a situation, let's say you're employed and you're being given unsatisfying, like bullshit tasks, do some work that is rote work that is not satisfying, that doesn't feel productive and that you kind of know is just going to get filed away and nobody's even going to use it or something like that, right? You have some kind of a bullshit job and essentially something inside you is refusing to spend the precious hours of your life doing this nonsense. It could also be that you're basically in the wrong line of work, that there is something about the work in front of you where you just feel like this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. This doesn't feel like the right thing. Maybe this is not aligned with your strengths and interests. And again, there's a refusal to do that. You don't want to engage with that because somewhere you know that there's something more important you could be doing with your life. Sometimes we do have to do this bullshit work. I, I think very few people can fully avoid this kind of thing in their lives. And so there, maybe you have to use like willpower and force yourself through it or whatever. But I think it's also useful to consider like, when is this a signal? that I'm just not doing the right thing. Now, this could also be that you just don't have enough clarity. A lack of clarity is unpleasant and leads to lots of procrastination. Maybe this is a separate category. I'm not sure. Maybe this is the same category. It's like you're either doing the wrong thing or you're just not sure about what you're supposed to be doing. You don't have a clear vision or a clear plan or, or clearly stated goals. And so it's unpleasant not so much that you have this work in front of you and you're trying to avoid that work, but it's just like, I actually don't know the work in front of me and that's super unpleasant. I don't know how to solve that. So I just feel lost. Where again, it kind of makes sense. That's unpleasant and disengaging, escaping, procrastinating to not be in that uncertainty is kind of a coping mechanism. This is what I find to be true for myself when I closely examine what's going on. A lot of the work that I do is indeed difficult or effortful, but I enjoy doing it. So I am having a much better time when I am doing the, in my case, it's mostly learning and teaching work plus some you know leadership managing type work but it's mostly my work of, of say basically learning things synthesizing knowledge and then turning that into content and courses and stuff like that when i'm engaged in that activity although that is what you could call effortful work in the sense that it, it engages me fully I, I need to fully give myself to this in order to do a good job at it it's not something that i want to avoid actually the work itself is not something that i want to avoid so i think this is worth examining to see to what extent are you actually causing the discomfort and stress and tension that you're trying to avoid or procrastinate on when it comes to your work. So let's try to make this a little practical because maybe you're wondering, okay, that sounds good in theory, but how exactly do I do that? So there's two parts to this. First, notice the tension that is self-inflicted. Notice the suffering that is self-inflicted. And then second, stop self-inflicting the suffering. So how do we do that? The first would be a question of awareness. And you can do this in two ways. You can do this in practice in the moment. So if you basically the next time you start a work session, pay attention, try to bring awareness to what is happening inside you and notice and almost like face towards or, you know, point your flashlight of awareness at feelings of discomfort and resistance and wanting to escape and procrastinate. See if you can just tell 
what does that feel like and, and where does it actually come from? What am I actually trying to avoid? This is something that can work, but it can also be quite difficult to do that in the moment. And I think there are, there's basically one solution to this. If, if you find it difficult to do it in the moment and just kind of introspectively, you can practice your introspective awareness skills and you can do that through different forms of meditation and you can do it through introspective writing. You can use writing and it doesn't have to be in the very moment. You can basically at any time just start writing about what is my experience when I am avoiding work and what does that feel like? And what you can examine is specifically, are there stories in my mind around having to try hard and having to get it right and I should, I should, I should, and I'm not good enough or I'm not fast enough or whatever. Are there stories like that? Because those stories, if you start unpacking them, you will find sources of tension there. And if you can stop believing those stories or stop telling yourself those stories repeatedly, that goes a long way to releasing that tension. Something that I think many of us suffer from is ideas that we picked up in school that added fear and tension around performance and learning, which is the kind of thing is like, oh, I have to do this well because otherwise the teacher will be mad or I'll get bad grades and my parents will be mad or I'll get humiliated in front of the class if I give the wrong answer and things like that. So it adds this fear and it adds like this pressure of performance that is actually not a necessary ingredient for learning. And it's certainly new, like a child will learn through trial and error without ever judging itself until like stuff from the outside externally starts going, oh, you're too slow, you're doing it wrong, whatever. And that kind of thing that adds these layers of fear and tension. Because the second part of this is how do you let go? Again, you can do this through writing and see if you can unpack some of these stories. Sometimes when you very closely examine the stories in your mind, they kind of dissolve by themselves because you just can't take them seriously when you look at them directly. But also you can do that in the moment in the moment when it's happening, try to spot that tension inside you. Try to spot the thing that I've been calling trying, right? There's there's this internal tension, this internal constriction of I'm trying hard. And see if you can feel that constriction directly in your body and just let go. Kind of like you unclench a clenched fist. And what you'll find is that you can unclench the trying and it doesn't take anything away from your ability to perform. And I think that's a really important insight. That's a really important thing to also try that out until you've proven it to yourself. You know, if I'm doing some kind of a creative task, if I'm trying to write something, then there can be this feeling of, oh, this is hard. And I don't know how to start. I don't know what to write. And then this inner tension starts building up. And the thing is, none of that inner tension makes me better at writing. I can try to squeeze myself into the higher probability of writing a good script shape, and it doesn't do anything to actually help me produce a good script. And if I totally unclench, then the worst case is that I am still stuck. I still don't know what to write. And sometimes the right thing is, well, I'll go for a walk then and come back to this later. But in many cases, actually the unclenching makes it easier to do the writing. And I get a higher performance out of myself when I'm trying less hard. And this is really the key insight behind all of this is that what I've noticed in the last two to three years or so again and again and again is that my best performance comes when I'm not trying hard. My best performance comes out of this relaxed state, out of not trying, out of not worrying, out of not tensing up, trying to do the best possible job by kind of just letting the thing happen. And this, what I explained just now, is one of the ways in which I'm trying to bring that insight into my everyday life and my everyday activity. I've basically started questioning those moments where I feel myself tensing up and trying too hard. And I've noticed that the better I get at letting go, the more pleasant my existence is. And also, it, if anything, makes me more creative and more productive, or it leaves my creativity and productivity unaffected. So the whole thing is just, it's like I said, it's its whole own thing that I can just let go of. It makes no positive con contribution to my life. And it can sometimes be hard to let go of that because it's like, oh, but I've done it so long, I don't even know what it's like to work without being under stress and tension and so on. So it can be difficult to let go of a habit like this. And maybe it can also 
bruise the ego a little bit to be like, oh, the thing I've been doing for the last 30 years doesn't actually work. <laughs> or, you know, I took so much credit for all the suffering I did, but actually I could have done all this without all the suffering. So it can be difficult to let go of the story. But this is my invitation to you to start examining this and see if you find something similar in your own experience. All right, and that's all. I would love to hear your questions, your comments on this. So go ahead and leave on the YouTube version of this. You can leave a comment right there. And also, if you would like to get maybe a guided meditation or something to practice the letting go of trying, it's something that I've also been doing in meditation. If that sounds interesting to you, let me know. Maybe we can do something. And final note, let me also plug once again, I am working on an introspective writing course which you can get on a waitlist on if that's something you want to learn, the tool set of introspective writing. If that's something you want to learn, check out the link below where you can get on the waitlist. That is all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.